Hello and welcome to another Cracking the Cryptic. Today I'm going to have a look at another variant Sudoku from the recent Sudoku Grand Prix competition. Um, this one's called No Touch Sudoku. Ooh, I've just realised I've got two of the givens in the wrong place and let's just correct that before we get started. Um, in fact, I've got several of them in the wrong place. There we go, that's better. Right, sorry, that's the grid that we are given. What I'm calling the givens are the numbers already placed in the cells, and as, as you can see, they're black at the moment. So, the rules on this one, it's regular Sudoku rules, but as an extra constraint, um, the digits placed, well, it's the same digits can't meet diagonally. So. There can't be a 5 in this cell because it would meet this one diagonally. Now, obviously, for a lot of the cells, um, for this 5, that hasn't added anything because all of its diagonal meeting cells would be in the same box, so they clearly couldn't be 5s anyway. So it's really only adding constraints for numbers at the edges of boxes. Um, so it's quite a minor extra constraint. As somebody pointed out in the comments, the more constraints, the easier it gets. But then the um, setters of the puzzle somewhat mitigate that by taking away some of the givens that would be useful otherwise. So um, this will be interesting to see how we get on with this. Um, and I'm just going to plunge right in now and try and solve it. So. The usual method, looking at kind of the shoots, as Thomas Snyder would call it, the, the two numbers in the same group of three boxes that are the same. We've got a six and a six there, so one of these two will be a six down here. Oh, they're coming out blue now. Well, you can still probably see them. Maybe that's a slightly easier colour for um, reviewing. There's two twos here as well. Unfortunately, that doesn't limit the twos much here. But it's worth pointing out that even those three twos, you don't know which one of those is a two, but they would all prevent this cell under these rules being a two. Um, and this may be something that we, we use a bit more later. Nines are better down here. There's two nines in the first and third columns of these boxes. Can't be one there because of that nine, so this is a nine. So at least we've got one digit placed there. Now these fours are making, across the bottom, are making four. One of those two is also twos. Same point about twos here. Um, twos up here. I'm not being very rigorous about how I search for these numbers in shoots, but nevertheless. Uh, four must be here because of these fours there and there. That's quite helpful. Um, fives at the top. Anything else at the top? Yes, twos again. There seem to be a lot of given and helpful twos in the puzzle. Um, three, one, six, five, not sure. Eight, three, nine, five. I'm sure we could deduce something rather clever about twos if we were our game. Right, now nines, this is interesting. Okay, those two nines that we've put in there. Oh, well, they prevent that, but then so does that nine already. In fact, these two nines are very clear about placing a nine, and that fixes that one. Um, in fact, nines, they're now complete. We've got all the nines. Okay. Should have spotted that possibility earlier. Fours have to be down here because of that nine going in that box. And that means fours here have to be either there or there. Um, ah, that's interesting. Fours can't be along the middle here. So the four in this box has to either be here where it can't be because of these three fours or here. So we've definitely used the extra constraint now to come up with something. And fours are there, are in the top section. Um, whichever one of these... Now, this is interesting. The fours in these two boxes, one of them has to be 
in the right hand column here and one of them has to be in this columns column seven here now whichever one of those is a four it stops this being a four this has been stopped being a four by this one so so this is the only place left for a four here that fixes that four um, so now, now we're really, I think, getting somewhere. We've got the ones fixed in the shoot there. Not sure about sixes. They, they must be there, but that's not very helpful to put in at this point. Um, five, six, seven, threes have to be down here. Um, ah, threes are there. And down here, three can't be in the middle. In the in the column eight, can't be that because of this three. So that can't be a three. That can't be a three. Three in this top box must be one of those two. Um, is that? I'm not sure if that's advancing our cause very much. But every bit of information we can get at this point are oh, eights in. 8 can't be any of those, and it can't be that because of that 8, so that fixes this 8 here. Um, 8 down here is one of these two. That 8 there, when we send that vertically, it means either this or this is an 8. Um, either this one or this one is an 8 as well. 6, 9, 7, 2, 4, 3, 8, 5. Can I only be one of those 3? 3, 9, 1, 4, 2. No, 6 here can only be there or there. That means 6 here is either here or here. Now, if we look at three here, we've got three can't be in those two cells. Three can't be in that cell. So the three at the top has to be either there or there. And that means that the three in the bottom box has to be here. It can't be here because of that three. That's placing a three here. That's fixing this as a three. Um, that can't be a three. Six, nine, four, five, seven, three. Not sure, but that can't be a two. So two is here. Oops. That's the two I'm going to get rid of. Nine, four, six, three, two. So eight has to be either here or here. Um and that fixes this 8. Now 8 has to be either here or here. Um, so that's quite useful progress. It'd be nice to be able to determine which of those was 8 and which was 1, but I can't quite do it yet. No, 6, 2, 5, 4, 2, 3, 9, 8, now 6 either has to be here or here by the diagonal constraint. So six now here is in one of these top two, top three rather. Um, eight, nine, three, two, six, four, one has to be one of these two. So this eight is actually proving that this can't be an eight. I hadn't noticed that before, I should have done. So that eight fixes that, that fixes the eight over here. That eight means we have either an eight here or here. Six, two, nine, five, eight, four, three. That can't be anything except a seven now. And finally, we've got some traction on the sevens. That fixes a 7 down there. Um, 7 has to be here or here. Those have to be basically both 6 and 7 now. And that fixes the 8 up there. That gives us a 2 there. I um, can't quite finish that off. Too. That means that this one can't be a 2. 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 1. That's not that helpful. Um, 
Oh, this one is the last one in its row, so it must be 1. Um, 6, 9, 1, 3, 7, 2. If we take that upwards, no, can't quite finish that off. But 1 has to be in the column at the top here, either there or here. Um, and therefore, down at the bottom, it has to be here. That fixes the 6 there. This last one must be the 5, so that one is either 3 or 1 now. Um, 2, 3, 1, 7, 6, 9. Not quite sure what to do with 4, 5, 8 up there. But this one's now fixed as a 5. The 6 is here. These are both 1 and 7 in some order. 1, 7, 4, 8, and 3. This one's fixed. Obviously, last one in its row. Um, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 1, 7, 6, and 5. No. Yes, that's the 6, and that's the 5. That 6 that we've put in now deals out that 2 and 6. That fixes that 6 and 7. Right, nine, seven four, six, eight, three. This is 2 and 1 in some order. That gives us a 7 here. Um, do, do, do sevens in this top box must be either there or there, so not in the middle column. Sevens in this box aren't in the middle column, so the middle column must have seven in there. That puts these as one and three, one and three, four and two. That fixes this eight. We can tell that that's six and seven, nine, seven, two, so... This is 1 and 5, and that's the 7, obviously. Um, 1, 3, 6, 5, 6, so that's 4 and 8, and that's the 5. Oops. 6, 5, so 4 and 8 in the final column must be there and there, that's the 4. 7, 9, 4, 3, 8, 6, 1. So this is 2 and 5 now in some order. We haven't got much left. Just need to find one more. Must be a diagonal constraint operating on something. Um, what am I missing here? Which of these pairs resolves itself? I think maybe this is something where we need... Either I'm... Missing a fairly... Oh, yes, there we are. 5 there fixes this as 2 and 5. That fixes this as 1 and 5. That fixes this as 1 and 2. And that one that we've just put in fixes this last double pair of 3 and 1. And there we go. So quite a fun way of doing the puzzle. Nice little extra constraint. And you can see at the end how it was necessary to resolve some of the puzzle. Um, I enjoy that, you know, it's quite an interesting puzzle, um, but I suppose I'm glad that the classic Sudoku doesn't involve that no-touch rule most of the time. Thanks for watching.